Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is Thursday, October 18th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about what climate change related features are influencing US weather at this time. In the last segment, we talked a, about a persistent heavy rainfall pattern over Texas that had a number of, of features, uh, observable features that appear to be related to features linked to human caused climate change, but uh, and, and like warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico and higher to much higher than normal atmospheric moisture loading as well as a kind of persistent weather pattern that some scientists like Dr. Jennifer Francis and Dr. Michael Mann have linked to polar amplification. So it's, you know, people talk about weather and climate and I just like to note that weather and climate are, are linked. The, the, the longer term features of climate and changes in climate related features alter the weather over time and and can load the dice for certain kinds of weather events and i'm just going to talk about the various features that we observe now that are related to human caused climate change that are impacting u.s weather and the first feature that i'd like to talk about is sea surface temperatures in particular, I'd like to talk about sea in the range of five degrees Celsius above average in the Earth Null School Monitor. A very warm pool of water versus traditional sea surface temperature south of Alaska and to the west of British Columbia, creating a hot blob kind of situation off the northwestern coast both of the US and of Canada. Both of these features are having an influence on upper level atmospheric moisture flow, I mean, uh, upper level atmospheric flows like the jet stream generating an impetus for ridge patterns across the North American West. We also have much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico as well as off the U.S. East Coast. And these much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures ranging as high as four degrees Celsius off the U.S. East Coast above average to around one to two degrees Celsius above average in the Gulf of Mexico are producing quite a lot of atmospheric moisture. And in combination with a flow from east to west, has tended to spike atmospheric moisture levels over parts of the central and eastern U.S. throughout summer and into fall, which is contributing to the extreme weather that we are seeing in Texas at this time. Moving on, I'd also like to point out that another feature related to human-caused climate change is affecting U.S. weather, and this feature is polar amplification in which the poles of the Earth, in, in particular, the northern hemisphere pole warm faster than the lower latitudes and right now we are seeing the arctic in the range of about four degrees celsius above average for this time of year as energy transfers into the arctic through the ocean zones increasingly and this is something that we tend to see during fall winter and spring and as as ice-free waters in the arctic bleed more heat into the atmosphere than they typically would because in the past, those waters were covered in ice and there was no opportunity for ther ther or very little opportunity for thermal transfer from the ocean, from the Arctic Ocean into the Arctic envir environment at this time of year. So what we're seeing now is a, a much warmer than normal Arctic, which is, uh, according to some scientists, having an influence on the jet stream. And we, we see these stronger ridge patterns in the West coordinate with energy transfer into the Arctic through the Pacific zone, as well as a, a dip in the jet stream in the east, which is contributing to cooler, nor cooler than normal temperatures there uh, and this sort of dipole weather pattern that we've seen over recent years. Looking at the jet stream, we can see the 
ridge in the west and the trough in the east pretty clearly in the GFS models with the ridge expected to build a bit more over the, the next 24 hours or so and the trough expected to persist with a kind of convergence in the jet stream near Texas, which is also helping to ignite more storms in that region. Again, I just like to note that polar amplification, according to some of the science, is contributing to this increasingly wavy pattern in the jet stream, which also contributes to very persistent weather patterns like that which we have seen recently over Texas with heavy in association with heavy rainfall. I'd just like to also point out that the temperatures out west are, are starting to get rather higher than normal with 80 degree, 81 degree Fahrenheit readings predicted for parts of Northern California for today. And for this time of year, th these are much warmer than normal temperatures in, in the range of about five to, in some cases, eight or nine degrees Celsius above normal for this time of year. And these much warmer than normal temperatures in association with both a ridge pattern and much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, which are related to human caused climate change, are also in influencing wildfires across the US West, which are continuing to burn in, in a number of locations, as we can see in this hotspot indicator provided by NASA Worldview, in which you can see both the hot spots as well as smoke plumes coming from fires that are still burning across parts of the US West in association with a much warmer than normal pattern. So we've got a few minutes left and I'd just like to call your attention to uh, just uh, one or two other features related to human caused climate change that is pre that, uh, that are presently influencing US weather. And, and that additional feature is increased atmospheric moisture loading over some regions of the US. Now, warmer than normal sea surface temperatures and global temperatures that have increased in the range of about one degree Celsius to 1.2 degrees Celsius above 19th century averages, overall have had an influence of, of producing about 7% more, seven to 8% more atmospheric moisture loading overall. The thing is because the atmosphere is uneven you tend to get these hot spots where atmospheric moisture loading spikes and, and accumulates and, and moves further outside of the traditional range, which is helping to spike extreme rainfall events, not just in the US, but across the world. And in particular right now, we're seeing a lot of much higher than normal atmospheric moisture loading through parts of the Southeast and into Texas. And this has a climate change fingerprint on it due to the fact that higher atmospheric temperatures hold more water vapor in suspension and higher sea surface temperatures evaporate more water into the atmosphere. So just an overall assessment of the various climate change related features that are presently impacting US weather. And it's important to keep these in mind because uh, th there's, there's kind of a misnomer that it, it, it circulates for now and then in, in which people seem to discount climate change related influences on weather patterns that affect us both on a national level and on a local level. And, and these climate change features, changing features of the climate are impacting us. And it's important to point that out. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.